Hey there, thanks for taking the time. Dr. Barry Reed, Mason Spine and Injury Center here in the greater Cincinnati area. Today's topic is going to be concussions, traumatic brain injuries, and they're traumatic. For those of us who have had them, we understand the difficulty with trying to do normal activities with having had a concussion or having post-concussion syndrome, as it's sometimes called. Um, a couple of misnomers are that um, some people think that you have to hit your head to have your bell rung or your marble scrambled or get a concussion. That's totally not true. Your brain inside your skull sits in a bath of cerebral spinal fluid and it literally is not connected to the inside of your skull. It sits there and it can move around. And if your head moves quickly enough or stops or moves this way anyway, then what happens is, is that your brain moves on the inside of your skull and then when it, it hits, then some of those connections, the neurologic connections can be lost. Um, typically, uh, you can hit your head, obviously. Football accidents are terrible. Um, we see a lot of people with soccer um, issues. You may have hit the head, your, the ball with your head. You may have had a collision. Um, and these sports injuries um, are, are typically overlooked by lots of people, parents, coaches, because the kid looked like they were fine, or they didn't seem like they were that bad. And the kid has a headache, or doesn't feel too good, or has some fuzziness the next few days at school. Uh, mental clarity is not quite like it should be. Kind of irritable, sleeplessness. And lots of these overlap with other issues, obviously. But we want to make sure that if there's a concussion present that we identify it and make sure that uh, especially kids and us big kids too get what we need to get. So um, for those of us who like to try to take care of things ourselves at home, I want to show you this. This is called the ACE. It's the Acute Concussion Questionnaire, um, Acute Concussion Evaluation. And there's different versions. This is the physician-based version, which is fairly technical, and um, but it's straightforward. And you can get this on, you know, you can Google it, pull off the PDF or look it up on your computer or your phone, whatever. Uh, acute concussion evaluation. And do it yourself. If you have any of these, then you add up the number of points of which ones are positive, and then you can determine the likelihood of having a concussion. I'm going to read a few of them off. Headache, nausea, balance problems, dizziness, visual issues, fatigue, sensitivity to light, sensitivity to noise, numbness or tingling, feeling mentally foggy, feeling slowed down, having difficulty concentrating, having difficulty remembering. It's been my experience that people in this office that have concussion, they have very high levels of irritability, forgetfulness, lack of clarity and lack of ability to understand easily either what they're reading or what they are hearing. Can you see any of those? No. Do people normally ask those types of questions? No. We just assume that they'll be okay. But if you have post-concussion syndrome, or have had a concussion, or have had a traumatic brain injury. There are very specific protocols that need to be followed to help those poor neurons that are trying to look for each other in your brain to reconnect. Also, it's critically important to know what areas of the brain have been damaged. So there are tests that we do that will help us identify. Was it back here? Was it in the middle? Was it in the top? Was it up here? Was it over here? Because headaches don't necessarily tell you where the problem is. And then we can identify where it is that the problem exists and then do certain activities to help encourage your brain to try to re restore those neuro-based um, synapses and 
pathways that used to be there that are a little scrambled. So, concussions are serious business, especially if you've had one or three or four in the past, because when you have one in the past, it's a whole lot easier to trigger another one to occur. And if you've had one in the past and you've got uh, the likelihood that you may have another one, then the need for good solid treatment is even higher. So please, please, if you see your kids and they had a fall and they, after practice or after the game, they say, hey, you know, something's not quite right. Do me a favor. Find this or find someone who knows how to do this and make sure we take care of our kids and each other and ourselves. Um, if you have any questions on this or anything else, please let us know. We're here to help. Free consultation. I'll be happy to review this with your child or you anytime. Free, free consults here in this office. Again, thanks for taking the time. Dr. Barry Reed, Mason Spine and Injury Center, including these um, here in the greater Cincinnati area. Look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks again.